Hey guys, how's it going? Kapan here. So today I want to talk about Nerubian Prophet. And Nerubian Prophet is one of the most amazing cards that's ever been implemented in Hearthstone. And it's a pretty damn good arena card. A lot of people kind of didn't really think that the card was going to be very good. But uh, no, it's, it's it was definitely going to be very good, at least as arena is concerned. Because if you keep it in your opening hand, you have a 3 mana 4-4. Four, four. And that in itself just makes it a fantastic arena card. But, you know, in some cases, you know... 4-4 four, four is very good because it kills the 3 fours, which are considered premium 3 drops already, but it also trades with the 4 drops that come after it. But in some cases, given certain board states or expected removal options, it's just as good to play a 3-3 three, three as to play a 4-4 four, four on turn 3. So sometimes, in some cases, it can be advantageous to save Nerubian Prophet for later in the game, in which you can play for like 2 mana on turn 4, sometimes you can do it with the hero power, sometimes you can save it even further than that, to the point where you have a zero mana 4-4. Four, four. And a zero mana 4-4 four, four is a pretty damn good card, even though it can come out later in the game, because Arena is a tempo-dominated game. And in this tempo-dominated game, a lot of classes don't have many tools that really push the tempo curve very much. Classes like Druid really struggle to just outvalue just big removal. Like, yeah, you play a 7-drop minion, they play a 7-drop minion, that's fair. But you play a 7-drop minion as a Druid, it gets, like, removed by a 3-mana spell. That 4-mana difference in tempo is something you'll almost never be able to recover from as a Druid, because you don't have those giant minion removal options as the other classes do. So this is kind of one of those tools that helps some classes and some decks, because in some decks you just don't have these high tempo cards, recover and really keep in line with some of the more dominant, more powerful decks out there in the arena world. So it's very interesting. It's one of the best cards ever designed for this because it's not overpowered, but it really pushes this niche. But on the other hand, there are some repercussions from Constructed that really kind of, you know, drive it home and make you understand a few of the problems that Constructed has. So, let's talk about just Constructed. Obviously, Nerubian Prophet in Constructed, he, uh, he's not really played very much. He was played in Evolution Shamans because in certain evolution decks, if you if you play an Arubian Prophet, it goes off of the original mana cost, so you can evolve into like a 7-drop, or it acts as a very nice jousting effect. But, you know, we can talk about that, for instance. So, you know, the Arubian Prophet proved just how failed a mechanic the jousting mechanic is. Because the Arubian Prophet is ridiculous with the jousting mechanic, because it's an early game card that costs a lot of mana, and it's unlike any other card in that regard, but still, Nobody is playing Jousters because they just absolutely suck and offer no consistency whatsoever, except for ones that, you know, draw cards and hunters and that kind of stuff. But that, that, not really. Nobody's really playing the majority of the Jousters out there because they're just, they just suck. And even though we have cards like Nerubian Prophet, not even close to enough to pushing it. But what I really want to focus on is the fact that, you know, we, we talked about how in after Naxxramas and after GVG, we had some of the most ridiculous early game minions, some of the most ridiculous death rattles, some of the most overpowered minions ever made came in those two sets. And when those two sets left standard, suddenly everyone was excited to play standard because, you know, we don't have to deal with so many of these ridiculous cards you have to kill like three times over. Probably Zoo is going to struggle. Probably a lot of the aggro is going to struggle. And really none of that happened. But it's not, it's not that it didn't happen. It's that the situation right now is so bad, people aren't even considering a 3-mana 4-4. Four, four. They're not even thinking about it. I've never seen this card in Constructed outside of my own Evolution decks. And if you think back to, like, the GVG time, you know, post max post-GVG, people were actually playing Ogre Brute. Yes, some decks ran Ogre Brute. Not for a very long time, but Ogre Brute is just clearly and much worse than Nerubian Prophet. And today, when we don't think we have too many of these death rattly and ridiculous minions, it's actually the opposite case. A 3-mana 4-4 four, four seems to have no place in the game right now. Isn't that crazy? So, Nerubian Prophet, while it's not a very good card in Constructed right now, it really proves a lot of these points and just how insane the aggressive minions are out there that a card like Nerubian Prophet can't even compete. So it's it's really a different game out there. But for now, I want to show you guys a few highlights, a few clips of some of the amazing interactions and some of the amazing impacts the Nerubian Prophet has had in some of my arena games, so you can get at least a taste for the card where it does actually have a significant presence. So check those out, hope you enjoy them, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. 
That's a pretty poor pickup. So two, two, and then two hero power. Pretty crappy. Excellent. If you need three for the quest, then two wins guaranteed. You have to draft Hunter differently than normal ones. I know. I know you have to go a lot more aggressive than normal. I think I'm just going to play the Bomber as is. If it hits, it'll trade. Good. Don't worry, loves. The Damn. cavalry's here. I'll just play the zombie channel. Just because he's at maximum HP. It's just gonna be way shittier later. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with her three, thank you. He doesn't have consecration. Well, I traded that way to draw extra cards. If he has consecration, I think I can't win. Um, the Hearth Arena tier list is uh, backed by people who are good at arena and statistics. And I mostly am interested in the statistics because I feel my opinion is about as good as anyone else's. But if statistics can manipulate the stats to show things like which legendaries are better than others and shit like that, then I'm going with the stats. Right. Didn't have Consecration earlier, so I'm not going to play around it now. Prophet was really good there. Yeah, this is over. See you later, bro. Man, I sure wish I picked Shifter Zerus, guys. Oh god. I wonder how good that would have been. <laughs> yeah, I know about the Light Forge tier list. I just don't... I don't value it as much. I'm sure it's good. I don't doubt that. I have fewer threes than twos, so we have to keep threes. My greeting. No, he had a coin. I had the first coin, but he got a coin from Tomb Pillager. Holy crap. Yes, please. I'll take that victory, thank you. <laughs> Coming like innervate Solanus to counter. It's time for a lot of blood. Oh, it is time for a lot of blood. What do you do here? What do you do? Ah, uh, the great outdoors. Sure. Oh wow. Oh my god. Okay. I'm I'm terrified. All right. You got me. Yeah, that that card is a little good as we've learned. Alright. 
can fireball, or I can just play this. I think I'm just gonna play that. What do we get? What? Yeah, I can't wait to draw Abomination and clear my own board completely this time. Nice Demolisher, bro. Nice. Okay, I guess. That's good. That's not that good. Okay. Uh, looks like we're still gonna completely wreck him, but I was hoping for a different style of wrecking. With like a nice big legendary. Wow, holy crap. Alright. You want it? I got it. Okay. To the slaughter. I can see. Hmm? The fact that that was actually a game that he could have maybe won is insane. Really insane. Not bad. Do I still have a Thrive for ARPG games? Yeah, a little bit. Some of them are nice. I should make this deck. Uh, I forgot how, how much fun Evolve effects can be. Gallowix is such a ridiculous 6-drop, too. Like, that was the ultimate punish, man. 8 health 6-drop that prevents me from playing spells. Holy crap. That was a terrible play. Alright. Never take off your socks, not even for a wash. How long they last if they fall apart? I don't know, let me know. Damn, that's terrible. It's time for I can wait. Just try it. Yeah, he can't do enough pings unless he has another well, card. Pretty low on HP, but it's mostly from the Gallowix shenanigans. We just had a very good nap, we're stretching now. Now we're wagging our tail because we smelled something on the desk. Now we're scratching our head. Damn, two fireballs. Yeah. 
Pop Tech Polymorph. Oh, look at that. What a wonderful game. Okay, that's the second legendary I've had to deal with. And flame strike. This guy lost the game? How did he do that? Zombie chow. Everything on my YouTube channel. Thank you. You smell like a leopard. I guess I'll ping the chow. Ping this turn. Okay, here comes Top Tech Polymorph again. Oh, jeez. That's pretty insane, actually. It's a mistake. Oh, I, I guess he plans on clearing. No, I'm pretty sure that's a mistake. Third legendary voice. Two and one mage. Crip style. The spell did he get? Well, the first one was off of Effigy, so he only has two in his deck, but that was a pretty savage Effigy. Mmm! Positioning mattered for once. How about that? Wow, it's a pretty good draw, but that's not good enough. Yeah, that was two legendaries, another one off an effigy, two fireballs, and flame strike so far. I would say that is pretty insane. 